Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be the making of Butterick B5926, which is this pattern here. So I have made version D, which is this one, and I'm wearing it now. And I'm really, really happy with this jacket. This pattern is designed for knit fabrics. So it suggests fabrics such as wool jersey, ponty, cotton knit, sweatshirt, fleece, that kind of thing. And I made it out of this really, I'm going to say cheap, <laughs> because it was this really, really cheap fabric from that I got from Colville. Um, it's this really lovely tartan fabric that I mentioned in my October plans vlog. And um, I got three metres of it. I think it cost me six pounds in the sale. And I'm absolutely delighted with this jacket. What I do like about it is the little touches that you just don't see on ready to wear, such as um, it's got back neck darts, which means that the collar actually sits nicely across your back. Um, and it's also got these lovely little elbow darts as well. I don't know if you can see them. I'll just come a little bit closer so you can actually see. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's got elbow darts just in there. And um, the beauty, obviously, of making your own is that you can make it to fit your unique body. And I have long arms and the arm lengths on this jacket is just perfect for me. So I made a size 12 around the shoulders and the bust and the waist and then graded out to a 14 at the hips and it fits me really really well. It is, although it looks quite tailored, there are no tailoring techniques in this jacket so I would say if you've got a few garments under your belt have a go at it. Um, what I like about it is that it's, although it's sort of looks tailored it's still quite um what's the word um casual i guess and tartan's really in this season so um yeah i'm really really happy with it and i think it's just something that great that i can throw on for autumnal days it's a gorgeous day today the sun is blinding me i'm in my conservatory at the minute so anyway i'm stop waffling and i will get onto the video so this video is basically a sew along so i'm taking you through the process from cutting out your pattern pieces to getting your finished garment like this um, i hope you enjoy it if you've got any questions please leave them for me in the comments below and i will try and get back to you um, but yeah have a look um, enjoy there are a couple of techniques that um, are a couple of steps should i say that were a little bit tricky for me um, I don't think I've got the collar, well it, I know that I haven't, it's not perfect, just where the join is here, where the collar meets the facing, um, is a little bit, there's a few little puckers there and um, yeah, I'm really going to have to sort of concentrate on my technique there to improve that for the future, but otherwise I'm really happy with it. The pattern matching is not absolutely perfect, the pockets don't match on the front, but they are um, the, the, the in a line, they're aligned if that makes sense. You'll see when I put the pictures in at the end. Um, so I, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. I wasn't too bothered about the pockets looking invisible against the actual jacket. So I'm quite happy with how the, how the pockets sort of stand out a little bit. At least they look, they look balanced. So otherwise I'm really, really happy with this jacket and I think I will get lots of wear out of it this time of year. So at the end of the video, I'm going to put in some posy pictures of me in the garden prancing about so you can have a look at it in a little bit more detail. But I hope you enjoy this video. Please give me a thumbs up and I will see you all again very soon. Bye bye. OK, so today we are sewing up Butterick B5926 and I am make, making view D, which is the longer length jacket without the edging detail. Okay, so I've cut out my pattern pieces and what we've got is we've got the back, 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 the back pattern piece here, which is piece five. We've got the sleeve piece, which is piece 10. You also want to cut out number two, which is the front, which is this one. The front facing, which is piece eight. And we've also got the upper collar, number six, under collar, Number nine, sorry, I've got those the wrong way around. Number six is the under collar, number nine is the upper collar, and then the pocket pieces as well. So in total, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pattern pieces for this jacket. 
Obviously before you cut out your pattern you need to make any adjustments to your pattern pieces that you need to make dependent on your unique body bodiness, your uniqueness of your body. For me, as I do with all my patterns, I have to lengthen. So there are lengthen and shorten lines on the pattern pieces. So I have added in about an inch and a half on the main body pieces of the jacket front and back. I've also dropped the dart position as well because the darts tend to be too high for me. Um, I think anybody age over 20, the darts tend to be a bit high. So I've dropped that by about three quarters of an inch as well. On the sleeve pieces, I have very long arms. So there are two positions on the sleeve piece where you can lengthen or shorten. So I've added in half an inch in the upper sleeve area and then another three quarters of an inch in the lower sleeve area. And that should give me enough room at the bottom to um, decide on the length once the jacket is made up. You'll also notice on the sleeve piece, there is a dart at the elbow as well. These are actually really useful. Um, I have made a couple of jackets before, which has had a, a dart at the elbow. You tend to see it in older patterns actually. So that's, um, that's, uh, that's always a useful tip, but obviously I've not, I've not um, altered the position of that dart. So we've got our pattern pieces cut out and ready. And the next step in the instructions is to add interfacing to the front facing pieces which is this one piece eight um, and also the under collar which is number six which is just that one there so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So the first step to constructing the jacket is to take the front pattern pieces and stitch the darts. So here I am showing you the dart position on the front pattern pieces. I'm using a pin to highlight the bus point so that I can transfer the bus point onto both front pattern pieces. I'm just using pins to do this. Normally I will use something like a friction pen just to make a little mark on the inside of the pattern pieces but this time I've just used a pin. So then what I'm doing now is I'm just pinning the bus dart on the front two pattern pieces, just pinning that together. And then we're going to sew these two pieces up. So now I'm showing you that I've pressed the bus darts down and then the next step that we're going to do is we're going to reinforce the top corners of the front pieces. So I'm just showing you that here. So I'm using a small stitch length here, pivoting at the corner and then carrying on and back stitching. And then what I'm doing here now is we're just going to snip into that corner right up to the stitching point but making care taking care that you don't snip through the stitches. So now we turn our attention to the pocket pieces we're going to sew a row of gathering stitches on the curved edges of the bottom of the pocket pieces. So here I am sewing the gathering stitches along the bottom edge of the pocket piece. You want a long stitch length here and make sure that you don't back stitch or cut off the tails. You need long tails because the point of this is so that you can just pull in the fabric slightly so that you can easily turn those corners when you're attaching it to the front of the jacket. So I'm just doing two separate rows on each corner of the pocket piece. So next I'm going to finish the top edge of the pocket piece on the overlocker. So that's how that looks and I'm really happy with that. And now I've made a couple of marks transferred from the pattern pieces where I'm going to turn the pocket over and we're going to press that down. So this is how that looks now those pocket pieces are pressed. And then next what we're going to do 
is you turn that pressed edge back on itself and then we're going to stitch at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance the pocket top back over itself so we're going to stitch there and stitch there. So here I am showing you how to stitch the edges of the top of the pocket so I'm using three quarters of an inch seam allowance here so that's one side done back stitching at the end and then we do the same on the other side back stitching again and then what we do next is we're just going to turn that back in on itself so it gives us a really nice neat finish and then we're going to go ahead and press that top pocket edge. Next we align the pocket pieces on the front pieces and we're going to edge stitch all the way round each pocket. So to edge stitch the pocket in place I'm using my top stitching foot and I'm using a two millimeter seam allowance here from the edge of my top stitching foot all the way around from the top corner of one pocket all the way down the side and I'm going slow here to make sure that I get that edge really nice and neat because obviously this is going to be seen from the front of the jacket those gathering stitches have really helped here because they've managed to pull in those curved corners of the bottom of the pocket so you get a really nice neat finish. So I'm just taking my time as I go along making sure that everything is nice and flat and that I'm getting that really nice neat finish to this pocket so that it doesn't go out of shape. This is really important if you're using a striped fabric or obviously a check, check fabric as I'm using because I want to make sure that everything stays aligned and looks really neat when it's done. So I'm just going up the other side now and then I'll be back stitching at the top of the pocket and I'm really happy with how that's turned out. What Then what I'm going to do is just repeat that on the other front side piece. There we go, one pocket finished. So next we're going to stitch the dart in the back of the neck on the back piece. So to do this again I'm going to transfer the dart markings using my friction pen, making sure that you've transferred the notches to your back piece from the pattern piece as well. And then we fold the fabric lining up the notches lining up the notches and then we're going to pin that in place. Excuse my head being in the way here. So we're just pinning that in place and we're going to stitch this dart exactly like we did the bus darts on the front pieces. So we do exactly the same on the other piece of the back of the jacket, lining up those notches and putting a pin in place at the end of where the dart is going to be. So we're going to go ahead to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch both those darts in place, starting from the top of the jacket and ending at the point. So once those darts are pressed towards the centre of the jacket, that's how they look from the outside. Really happy with that. Now we're going to stitch the centre back seam together. So right sides together, we're going to pin the centre back seam. Now obviously if you've got um, a fabric with a pattern such as mine, whether it's check stripes or any other kind of pattern fabric, you want to be really careful here and use lots of pins to make sure that everything lines up. And I'm taking my time here to make sure that all those checks line up as best as they can all along the edge of the back of the jacket. So I'm going to go ahead and just check that everything is matching so that when this is sewn up I've got the uh, checks lining up as best that I can. Mm -hmm. 
So press in the back seam open and then I'm really happy with how that lines up. So there's the back of the jacket complete. So the next thing we're going to do is we are now going to attach the front pieces of the jacket to the back of the jacket at the shoulders, right sides together. And we're also going to stitch the side seams together as well. So we're going to stitch across the shoulders at the top there. Next we're going to stay stitch around the neckline to prevent it stretching out when we attach the facing. So we're going to do that now. So here we are stay stitching from the corner of where the facing will be attached all the way around the neckline edge. And what this does is this helps stop the neckline stretching out because we're using a jersey fabric and we don't want that neckline, that lovely neckline where we put those darts in to keep a really nice close fit around your back and your shoulders. We don't want that stretching out while we're adding the face in. So stay stitching will help to prevent that happening. So next we're going to apply the collar to the outer jacket. So using the interfaced under collar piece, we're going to attach that right sides together to the jacket. So we're going to pin this carefully, matching up the edges of the seams and the notches to make sure everything is in place. So here I am just checking the notches and making sure that those line up. This is why it's really important to make sure when you are transferring pattern pieces to your fabric that you transfer every single notch to make sure that all these line up. And here I am just making sure that where we snipped into the corner of the jacket up to that reinforced stitching line if you remember, I'm just making sure that all that there is aligned really carefully. You will have a little bit of extra fabric at the back there and you need to make sure when you stitch in that you stitch really slowly over that part so that you don't get any fabric caught in your stitching and don't get any puckering. So I'm just taking my time here to make sure that everything is lining up really nicely and pinning everything in place. So again, I'm just checking at the back where that snipped corner means that you can stretch out your fabric slightly, making sure that I'm not catching any of the fabric in my in my pins. So that's how that looks once the stitching has been done. We've now got the collar attached to the outer coat and it's beginning to look like a jacket. So I'm really pleased with how that's gone. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn our attention to the front facing pieces. So here they are and like we did with the front pieces of the jacket we're going to reinforce those corner edges with some short stitching and snip into the corners. So here, we, here I am at the sewing machine, like we did with the outer jacket pieces, we're stitching in the corner, pivoting at the circle, and we're going to do that on both the facing pieces. These are the facing pieces that we interfaced earlier, and here I am stitching into the corner of the facing piece, right, right up to the stitching. Okay, so I want to show you how to attach the upper collar to the facing pieces. And the reason I'm doing a bit of a close-up video for this is because the instructions I don't think are very clear. Um, and the reason I say that is because this is the third time I've stitched this, these two pieces together and had to unpick. So what you need to do, I've done one side already, is have your facing pieces in front of you. Just turn the camera a little bit more. Have your facing pieces in front of you right sides up, okay? So that the curved edge is facing out. Can you see that on both sides? So the curved edge is, edge is facing out. And your facing pieces have got the shoulder seam together there, the neck seam, so you can see the right angles are there, okay? 
Then bring your upper collar with the curved edge to the top. And what you'll see on one side of your upper collar is you've got a little notch there. On your facing piece, ignore the bit that you've cut into when you've cut into the um, internal corner there, but you've got a little notch there and you need to line those notches up together. Really important that you do that, okay? So make sure obviously when you have cut your pieces out that you have transferred all the notches across. And then continue pinning across. So your upper collar and your face and your facing pieces, what you'll find is that they are the upper collar is actually in the middle of your facing piece like that. It shouldn't be at one end, and that's the mistake I did the first time and had to unpick it. The second time I attached the upper collar, I had my facing pieces the wrong way around, um, and then sewed it up and it, stood, it didn't fit at all. So that's what, that's what you should end up with. You should end up with your two facing pieces with the bottom of the facing pieces curved sides out, and then your upper collar attached like so to both sides. So we're gonna go ahead and stitch this across there stitch this side across there and then hopefully we'll be able to attach it to the outer shell of the coat. So next we're going to attach the sewn upper collar and facing pieces to the jacket along the top edge of the collar there. We're going to pin that first and then we're going to pin the rest of the facing right sides together matching seams and notches all the way down the jacket. So we're just going to go ahead and do that now. So here I am back at the sewing machine stitching the facing to the outer jacket. And I'm starting at the center of the collar and working down one side first. And then when you get to the corner where you snipped into, you backstitch, remove the needle where that seam is there, fold over the seam allowance, and then put your needle back down and then carry on. It's really important to do that so that you don't get that seam caught in the seam allowance. And the reason for that will become clear when we finish stitching this, because we're gonna to have to remove some of that bulk there to try and get that collar pleat piece to lie really nice and flat. So we're just finishing off, stitching all the way down the front of the facing, right round to the bottom, back stitching at the end, and then we're gonna repeat that on the other side of the jacket. Okay, so the next thing to do is to trim down all these seams. Um, this seam here on the edge of the collar and the facing piece, there's quite a lot of sea, um, bulk here, so you just need to trim this down significantly so that when it's um, turned the right way around and pressed hard, it will sit nice and flat. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm gonna trim down some of this seam here and I just use these tiny little embroidery scissors to do this kind of thing so I've got a bit more control and then I'm going to do the same again on that little bit of seam just there just so that we get rid of some of that bulk as we turn it and then when we turn this the right way through just means there's a lot less bulk in this corner here to be able to lie flat so we're going to have to go ahead and press this now I'll just poke that through so we're going to go ahead and press this so this is the outer this is going to be the outer collar piece of the jacket and then what the instructions tell you to do is this piece here which should be pressed 
so that the seam allowance needs pressing over there um, what you need to do is that has to be attached to the shoulder seam so the internal shoulder seam sorry it's not very clear on this because I'm trying to show you close up so the internal shoulder seam is here and the remaining little flap of the facing needs slip stitching to that shoulder seam so that when you are wearing the jacket this is the facing here it's going to be pressed out it obviously is attached nice and firm so it, so it doesn't flop about so I'm going to go press these seams now I'm going to trim the other internal seam on the other side of the jacket open that out press these seams really hard and then slip stitch this to the shoulder internal shoulder seam of the jacket and then we'll see how that looks okay so I have slip stitched the facing seam to the shoulder seam inside and I've overlocked the outer edge or inner edge is it maybe of the facing so that at least if that flips open a little bit it looks fairly decent the next thing that I'm going to do is slip stitch the collar to the seam on the inside so that lays nice and flat there so I'm going to go ahead and do that now um, and it's really coming together then we will just have the sleeves to insert and the hem to do so this is what it looks like it's really looking like a jacket now and I'm really really happy with how this is uh, this is looking I've pressed all the collar edges and the side seams and the next thing we're going to do is attach the sleeves so moving across to the sleeves we're going to stitch the dart first so as we did with the neck dart and the bust darts I'm just going to use a pin to highlight where the point of the dart is going to reach and I'm using another pin now just to mark that on both both sleeve pieces and then we're going to stitch that dart together. So once the dart is stitched and pressed I've now inserted some gathering stitches between the notches at the head of the sleeve and then we're going to join the side seam together so I'm going to pin this very carefully matching up all the checks as well as I can and stitch all along the side seam of the sleeve. So once you've done that, here I am just pinning the sleeve to the jacket. Again, right sides together, matching up all the seams. And it shouldn't be gathered, it's just eased in, is the sleeve head. So then we're gonna sew that together. there I have pressed the hem up all along the bottom and the one thing about having check fabric or stripy fabric is that you've got a lovely guide for um, how you how you turn over the bottom hem so what the instructions then tell you to do is just to even out the hem which I've done I've cut along all the way across and then what I'm going to do next, oh I'm sorry I'm trying to keep this really still so it's not too shaky, is I've got this bias binding. Rather than just overlocking it and stitching it, I've got some black satin bias binding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that to um, give us a nice finish on this bottom hem because this is going to show um, when I'm wearing the coat, I would imagine. So I'm going to, you know, I'm not too bothered about the seams being exposed like that obviously I haven't finished these seams because it's a jersey fabric so it's not going to fray and I don't imagine I'm going to be putting this in the wash very much anyway um, and although I'm quite happy with the overlocked facing pieces here I just think the bottom will look better finished with the bias binding so I'm going to go ahead and do that now and then I'm going to hand stitch it to the jacket <laughs> 